Today we're going to talk about what does it feel like to have a parrot? How much time does it take? What do you have to do for them? And what are some positives and negatives to having parrots flying around in your life? What is it like having a pet parrot? Hey guys, I'm Kaylin. I love parrots. Parrots are my bliss. I am the author of The Parrot Bliss Bond, a couple other books. I'll put some info down below and later in the video. What is it like having a pet parrot? Now, if you are new to parrots, you may not know that there are um, about 400 species of parrots. It depends on how they're classified. Of course, when you go to a breeder or an exotic bird store or a bird show, great place to find parrots, you're not going to find that many species, but you could very well find 10, 20 species, um, depending on where you go kind of thing. So it, some of it also depends greatly on the species. There is a variety of species, some that are more independent <laughs> and fly away and abandon me during my video. I'm playing around. There are some that are more communal and that will connect more and that won't leave your side quite as much as some others, which is good and bad, right? It sort of depends on the lifestyle you want. So what does it feel like to have a pet parrot? For me, it is an awesome feeling. I love parrots. They are really intelligent companions. Now I've had cats and dogs. I have a cat and a dog. I love cats and dogs. I've had other um, pets, but what I like about parrots is that, I, I should be introducing them. This is my golden conure Boatrix. On my head is Jules, who is my Indian ring neck, and who is a more independent species. So he's more um, or less tame and more going where he wants, <laughs> when he wants. What does it feel like? You know, I, I love it because they're more intelligent. Those other animals, they're really good companions too. Like I said, we have a dog and a cat. I love my dog and my cat, but mwah. Um, parrots are amazing because they can talk to you depending on the species. They can call to you. Whether your parrot speaks or not, they do communicate non-verbally and they do a really good job of it, which a lot of animals do. And because of their intelligence, they just, they're really good at learning tricks. They're really good once they know the routines of the home. They're really good at being in the routine, working within it, especially when they have companions. Parrots are highly social, so they really do best when they have a companion. When they're alone, they can get lonely, they can get depressed, they can pluck their feathers, it can cause more problems. So maintaining that well-being is more easily done when they have a buddy. Um, but it feels really nice because it's like you, you just have someone who you saw comes to you, flies to you, who you can like toss and they'll fly in the air when they know how to fly and their wings aren't clipped. And they just have this way of sort of showing up for you and letting their presence be known and letting it be known that they're there and they want attention and they it's they're just they're just really awesome like you could see Bellatrix is doing it with me now he's like Mwah. I'm here I want attention don't you don't you sweetie bye yes Bo you're such a good bird yes you are I love my Bellatrix yes he's a species that can talk some but he's not a big talker so he won't, he'll, he's starting to talk a little, but he won't talk too much. Or are you gonna, are you gonna fly off? What are you gonna do? So you can see, like they just, they keep you company. Are they like that all day? No, you know, they take a nap during the day. Um, a lot of them like to do their own thing, but depending on the species, some of them do want to be with you as much as possible, maybe hanging out on a perch nearby you or on your shoulder. How much time does it take to take care of a parrot? It sort of depends because some parrots take more time and some parrots take less time. That is generally speaking dependent on a parrot size. So in a minute, I'll also talk about what you have to do for them. And we'll, we'll talk about the different things that you have to do, which will give you a good idea of the time too. But when it comes to training a parrot or um, giving them attention, generally speaking, the bigger the bird, the more time, the more training, the more attention in a way they need because 
bigger birds sort of have bigger personalities emotionally. Um, their development tends to be a little more like a three, four, five-year-old kind of thing that has real needs. And fortunately, it's, again, it's not like all day long, but they really do need great care. I would say that parrots are pretty high maintenance um, pets. So what do you have to do for them? You, number one, if you want a friendly, sweet parrot, you have to spend a lot of time with them, a lot of time, every day. And really the more time you could spend with them, the better. If you, um, for example, are at work all day and you only have one parrot, and then you come home and you're tired and you have to make dinner, maybe you have to do your laundry, it's going to be really hard to bond with your parrot because they will have spent almost 24 hours, you know, however many hours, all night, and then you rushed out to work, and then you were gone for eight hours at work, or maybe nine by the time you commute or include lunch. You know, that ends up being a lot of time that they're not with you. With their partners, they're with them 24 seven. So even if you're spending like, even if you could spend 10 hours with your parrot, they still, believe it or not, do best when they do have that companion. But you can get a sense that only spending even a couple hours with them when they're the only parrot can be really difficult um, on the bird. They just expect more time to be spent with them. How huh, sweet. Mwah. That's probably one of the biggest things. Now that time doesn't mean you're it like this, you know, he'll go on a, um, a perch and play, do other things. It's not like he's going to require 10 hours of my constant 100% attention. It's not like that. Now, the next thing, they do require fresh vegetables in their diet. A balanced diet includes fresh vegetables, pellets, and then depending on the species, they might need some seed supplement. They might require some nut fat, like this bird, he does require about a quarter cup of nuts in his diet every day. So those fresh vegetables, they're going to be vegetables like broccoli, carrots. They do really well. It's important to give them some beta carotene rich foods. So maybe some um, <clears throat> orange sweet potatoes. And you know, you just give them as much as they'll eat um, in the morning kind of thing. Uh, I like to give them as much as I feel like they'll eat. Sometimes I mix it with rice, sometimes I mix it with quinoa. You know, I do try to mix it up and give them a variety of things. Making that breakfast, it sort of depends on how much prep you're gonna have to do. Like if you're pulling some fresh vegetables, some carrots, some broccoli out of the freezer, um, some, or out of the refrigerator, some peas. Um, if you, you know, if you need to heat that sweet potato, you microwave it just enough to loosen the fibers. You don't want mushy sweet potatoes for them, but you don't, you don't, they're going, they're going to digest it better when it's had a little bit. So, you know, that takes a few minutes of prep. It's not too much. And it also just depends on how many birds you have. If you're making a lot of prep, it takes longer. If you're only doing, you know, a couple of parrots, it takes less time. I have over 22 species of parrots because I do love parrots and I love learning about them and I love bonding with them. So my prep does take a little longer. Next, for what you need to do to take care of them, you need to make sure that their cages stay clean. A really wonderful thing to do is take out the bottom tray that has maybe some paper or paper towel that catches their poop and clean that out every day. Their cage also gets dirty depending on the parrot Sometimes when they poop, it gets on the sides or maybe food falls on the bottom rail. And so those things do need to be cleaned really well, probably maybe once a week, sort of depending. And depending on, again, depending on the parrot and depending on the cage size, it takes more or less time to clean. Um, with a small parrot, you know, it may not take long to just take like, I use vinegar water, make sure the parrot's out, spray the whole thing, wipe the whole thing down. That's not going to take, you know, more than, I don't know what, five, ten minutes kind of thing. But then if you have a bigger cage, and my bigger cage is we take them into the driveway and we power wash them, that's going to take longer. That might take 15, 20 minutes, depending on the cage and depending on, you know, the bird, how much, some birds, their poops are very small, some birds, their poops are bigger. So. Some of that depends, but that gives you a kind of an idea. The last thing, oh, what you doing? Is 
um, that you need to do for them is you need to either buy or make them toys. Carrots, <laughs> everyone's flying into the sea now. Hi, Tico. There's my orange ring to Amazon. Um, parrots, they've got these incredible strong beaks that are really made for biting wood, breaking down wood. I call them nature's recyclers because, hello Indian ring neck, hi Jules, because they really do, there's Tico, go and break wood down. They do this to make a nest, but I think they also do it as their part in nature to help break down old wood so that you know it does break down and then something new can grow kind of help with cleanup that way that means that um some species of parrots they have to have some wood to chew on just to de-stress like to stay normal in other words in the wild they're so used to the fact that they would have that is he bugging you did he bug you that they just need that to maintain themselves so um, you have to either be willing to buy them toys, and some parrot toys can get really expensive, or you have to be willing to go and get, for example, some pine wood, and you have to make sure that you're getting woods that are not toxic to your parrot. And if you have the ability to like cut a two, two by two or a one by two, drill holes in it, and hang it on some natural rope so that they, don't, they can't get tangled in it, like some nice sort of thick rope that won't easily get tangled around their leg or something like that then you can hang it in their cage and again you know it's not a big deal if you have a couple of parrots buying or making a couple of toys is probably not a big deal they could probably depending on the parrot some parrots like toys more some parrots like toys less some parrots like my bigger parrots like you just saw my amazon or my macaw they'll go through a toy in a day or less and then other birds like my budgies, my parrotlets, toys almost become kind of decorative. I mean, like the parrotlets, they'll definitely eat at things, but the toys will last them longer. So that sort of depends on the bird you got as far as like which species, but it also depends on the personality. So it varies. One positive, one negative, and another positive thing about parrots. The positive, they're a companion that can last you multiple decades. I love this because I once had a dog that we really, she was just magical, she was awesome. She just, anyone that met her said she was fantastic, but you know, she was a, a medium to large sized dog. So um, she didn't live 20 years. I don't think she lived 15 years and that was really hard. I think we still miss her and it's just been more than a decade. So one thing I love about parrots is that most of the parrots you're seeing in this video, my Indian ring neck, my golden conure, my Amazon, they are all parrots that should should be able to live um, the Indian ringneck probably 20, 30 years, the golden conure about the same, maybe even 40. Um, the Amazon, Amazon parrots are longer lived, so my Amazon parrot should be able to do 50, 60 years kind of thing, maybe more, maybe less. They're like us. If, if they catch something, um, you know, there are diseases. If you catch a disease, your lifespan is obviously going to shrink. There are some people that are centenarians. So there are some parrots that live a long time. And then there are some parrots where life just catches up with them. They get a disease and that's that. So, so it can depend, but generally speaking, they should be able to live just decades and decades kind of thing for you. A negative. They can be very messy. You could see that Botrix is playing with a shell to a pistachio. And so he's breaking it up. Like I said, that they do, that's, you know, it's not exactly wood, but he's treating it that way. And the pieces are going all over my floor. So I'm gonna have to sweep. Um, so they, they're pretty messy. You know, when they take that wood and they break it up, you end up with all these little things. And I've never gotten a splinter, but it's kind of like, they leave a mess of possible splinters, so you have to be careful. And the other thing is, you know, they're messy and they're loud. Generally speaking, parrots are very squawky. Right now, out here, they're not being too loud, but my Amazon that you saw, he is one of the loudest. The decibels can get up there, not as loud as a cockatoo, but they can certainly get up there, and it's hard. It is not unusual for Amazons to be loud in the morning and in the evening. It's not uncommon at all. and um, it's natural. It isn't something you can necessarily train out of them. You might be able to train them, for example, to sing or to talk. 
and then maybe they'll do that instead for you but it's a natural behavior so it's not one that you're going to train out of them it's not one that you're going to give them negative repercussions for parrots do very poorly with negative repercussions if you give them negative repercussions they can get um wounded they can get mean they can get bitey it goes in the direction you don't want when it comes to parrots we really train them and correct them with love and attention so it's called a lot of positive reinforcement and not necessarily negative reinforcement and so um you're not really going to train that noise level out of them just like i'm never really going to train their desire to steal my earrings to steal and break my necklaces that's why i have ribbon necklaces I can't do metal, they, their beaks break it like that. So <clears throat> those are the negatives. They can really be loud and it's just perfectly natural. That's how they find each other in the wild. It, like one's in one tree and one's in another tree and um, very messy. The last positive, if you give love and care, they're phenomenal. And to say that they give it back is really an understatement. It's really cool to have them call you um, they sometimes they call you if they're looking for you to have them perceive what mood you're in or perceive that you're getting ready to leave the house and they, they say bye bye to you perceive that you're coming home and they start to say hello before you have driven up the driveway which is not every parrot but the more bonded you are with a parrot the more likely it's it's likely to be that way um, to perceive that maybe you're not feeling as good and they'll come and keep you company but even when everything's great to have one on your shoulder, just being your friend. I mean, you see them flying around. They're happy to be with me. They're happy to be in the flock. They, if I go in the house, they're all gonna wanna come in the house because they like being with me. And it just makes you feel like you belong. Your tribe becomes a flock and you know, you can read their body language the more time you spend with them. They can read yours. You have your routines. They know what's going on and you really share your lives with them. And again, I think you do that with a lot of animals, but parrots just are so intelligent. They're able to solve puzzles. Um, you'll see they, some parrots open their own cages. And so it just becomes a relationship that is in some ways intellectually very matched, which means you can also have a lot of bonding and it's just super awesome and super fun sharing your life with them. They share your life with you. There's nothing like it. Now, if you enjoyed this video that has ended with no parrots, you have seen three parrots. Ketsy, you want to come? Come here. Let's show you off. This is my white belly kite. So if you um, enjoy this, please give my parrots and I a thumbs up. It helps my juice. If you have any questions or comments, oh, you're not Ketsy, you're Hopper. Hi, Hopper. Hi. Please post them below. It helps my juice. And then I will catch you in one of my over a thousand blissful feathered videos.